So we yeah. can't take it too far. But yes, yeah. we're having Muriel die after the birth, not die in childbirth or something like that. Mm. Yeah, so ben, and I think that there are certain time. parallels into her experience, but I'm glad that we're not going to be pushing it too far. Because postpartum depression is something that we want to be really careful in portraying the idea that it's like somehow her fault that she's yeah. As soon as they said it was going to be her fault, I was like, oh, we can't make postpartum depression be her fault. Yeah, it's not. not it's just not accurate. So uh, <laughs> skipping that. Yeah, Somewhat. and and the premonition flashes. I I actually specifically asked for that um, during the the initial broadcast. I, I asked to show um, that she has this idea through the entire time that she's pregnant. She has this idea that the the child is going to be amazing, like mm -hmm. he's going to be the best greatest ever. ever. Yes, he's the he's going to be the bestest baby ever, <laughs> but. During the actual birth, she's going to experience these premonitions of death and blood and fire. And yes, he is also going to be the worst elf baby ever. <laughs> and that's what yeah. sets her on the path of, oh my god, I can't, I can't even watch this. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's what they wanted us to do. So I think that is a direction we're supposed to head in. Um, I would like her final decision not to return to be tied to like giving permission yes. to Finway to move on and to yeah. someone else. Like she should be doing something a little bit self-sacrificing there of, yeah, I can't deal with this whole coming back to life thing. I, I can't handle it, but, but I will promise to never ever do that just so he has the opportunity to find happiness yeah. with someone else. So like, so, like, so, there should be a little bit of self-sacrifice on her part there to show that she's trying to make it right the only way she can. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so what, like, we, could what we could do is have Mando, like, have, have Finway basically say something to the effect of, well, it's okay, right? I mean, Ingwe's in, in wife came back. She'll come back. It'll be fine. And Mando basically yeah. just says... I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, yeah, the, the actual refusal to be re-embodied can be something we save for the next episode with yes. the warning that there's a lot happening in the next episode. It's yes. very busy. Yes. Because um, that is Feanor the Wonder Kid and, oh, look, Finway and Indus get married and, oh, look, Feanor and Nerdnell get married and it's just, it's busy. So yeah. if we finish Muriel's story now, that might be better than having to deal with Muriel in the beginning of the next episode and the whole, is he, is she coming back? Isn't she? I, I don't know where exactly we want to cut this one off. Yeah. And yes, Alex, it, it, I, I agree that the, it, it is rather tough because the episode really is all about Muriel, but we, it's going to be tough because she's not going to be there. Well, she'll be there, but she's not going to be alive at the end. You know, and so it's kind of tough to make her the protagonist of the episode. Protagonist of the episode. I mean, I guess are Could, are kind of can like. You make, one. Can you make someone protagonist for like three fourths of the episode? Kill them off and have someone else be the protagonist for the end piece. Is that a thing that you can do? It's awkward. I, I realize Alex does not like that idea. Yeah, he's he's having a meltdown somewhere. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I, I only asked if it was possible in a specific case like this where you're telling the story about one person and then no. they, they leave. Okay. I just, just yeah. ask. No, but what we could, here's the thing though. What if, what if we basically spend the, the wrap up of the episode in grieving? I mean, like, we could make the... The birth has got to be the climax of the episode. There's no way... There's no... <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. There's no way that that's not our climax. That's the most interesting thing that happens. The... Yeah. And that's where I was kind of wondering if we could do, like, like a false climax so that Muriel's story takes place in the first 45 minutes of the episode... And what would usually be the the end 
is now like 15 minutes of something else? Um, looks like we may have lost Karina. Um, okay. We can do birth as the end of act three, but then what, how do we, how do we top that? Well, that's the, the thing is we're not going to, our, our act four is not going to be a more climactic event unless it's a surprise that she's not coming back. But act four is going to be grieving a death. It's going to be all falling action. And, and I don't, I don't know think that that's works. terrible. I, I think, I think you're allowed to I, do that. I, I know it's not about topping, but what I'm saying, it, it, and what Marie just said is, is kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about. If we're doing falling action through Act 4, do we have a problem there? I, I feel like we do. Hey. It, oh, hey, Brian is here. Um, okay. but give me, would it give me a second to let you in, Brian. Hang on. Go on, Marie. Marie. Um, oh. I, I was just going to say, is it bad to leave time for grieving. Like after, yes, hopefully, after a death, are you allowed to, to like give time for that, space for that in, in a show? I don't, because like this isn't a, a movie where you have to like end the movie now. Yeah, I know, I know this is an odd final act, but it also is the childhood of Feanor and Feanor and Finway's relationship developing. I mean, things are happening. It's not like they're sitting there crying for a full act. Hi, Brian. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's okay. very silly and ugly this morning. <laughs> okay. Thank you for waking up and joining us. I'm mm. happy to be here for a change. Okay. We're, uh, we're trying to structure the episode, and we're running into the issue that it's kind of all about Muriel, but she's going to mm. die. Mm -hmm. So we're um, running into who the protagonist is and how we're going to deal with right. the ending and the climax of the episode mm -hmm. with having it be all about her up until the point where she dies. Right, because the birth and death, the birth of Feanor... Actually, wait a minute, hang on. The, her death... Her, the birth is not the climax of the episode. Her de Muriel's death is the climax of the episode. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so while the the birth is the most intense action that we're going to get in the, over the course of the episode, it's not the 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 climax is going to be a psychological climax. It's it's going to be the death of Muriel and Finway's reaction to like but this you were supposed to be safe here like this is that's the whole point of yes. this the thing is we need time after that for finway's reaction yes a and yes. The but there, there yes. will be enough time in the in the the tag in the end of the the episode itself yeah but can we give 10 minutes to that 10 minutes out of an hour that doesn't seem super unreasonable mm -hmm. like maybe maybe yeah the reason I ask is that he has to marry somebody else next episode. So I know. if his wife dies at the very end of this episode and he grieves her for two minutes on screen <clears throat> and then, you know, next episode he's courting someone else who, oh, look, was kind of around in this episode a few times. He's going to look kind of skeezy. And yeah. we don't want the audience to judge him overly much for that. Yeah. Feanor is going to. All the elves are going to. Come on, guys, give him a break. And, and he, they won't feel that way if, he's, if he didn't grieve his wife. Well, the only way to fix it is if the marriage of Finway and Inde Indus takes place, like if the relationship and marriage takes place in the, in, in the last half of episode, of, of episode, <coughs> excuse me, of episode seven. But we need the kids. We need Fingal. Fing I, I know, I know, I know. So we can't postpone Indus too long. And yeah, it's, next episode's tricky. And we have to handle this, this one. why right. I was saying this was two separate seasons. Anyway. <laughs> Well, uh, no, I think that they've, they've encapsulated the season properly, but um, 
Uh, what's the what's the beginning? What did what did I miss? <laughs> what's the beginning? We're, of this? Well, we're trying to get the structure of the episode down because we know what's going to happen. Right. We okay. just got to figure so, out what the where it does what it needs like, to do. It's like forcing. Here's what's happening in in the episode is, um, Muriel and Indus are friends. Right. Um, Muriel is pregnant mm -hmm. and gives birth to Feanor. And Muriel dies. Right. Meanwhile, back in Middle Earth, we have Thingol starting a kingdom right. and Sauron doing his final scene with orcs for the season. That's right. So we do have two. We have two scenes that have to happen back in Middle Earth as interlude somewhere in all of this. Um. Then I think. I think Muriel probably needs to die at the beginning. Or at, at either at the end of Act yeah. Two or at the beginning of Act Three. But um, then, but what's the climax of the episode? I think probably the climax of the episode has to be something that's not related to Finway and Muriel. I mean, I, actually, and it's not. <laughs> you could you could make the climax of the episode uh, his relationship with Indus. Or that's a little quick. It's a little uh, quick. Well, it doesn't, but it doesn't have to be like it's the, it's the beginning. Yeah. Like. The and Alex, they can't. They can't be the B plot. We can't make the birth of Feanor being the B plot. Yeah. Yeah. No. There's no way. <laughs> happening is back in Middle no. Earth, and if we make Middle Earth the A plot. Yeah, I don't think we should do that. That. But. But it, the, although the, the Middle the Earth still has to I get it. We don't have to show them. We don't have to show them like B becoming romantic we just have to show that they're headed in that direction right we have to suggest that that's yeah. that that's no the... we don't <laughs> finways needs well, to be grieving I mean, his dead wife he's in not it. looking for someone new right 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 but but the beginning of their like reliance on each other emotionally or whatever okay you see what i'm saying even like, even if you both did be, that they're both grieving yeah even if we did that, like, what's they're, the... grieving, they're grieving. They're grieving Muriel's death together, and this implication should be that that is some, that's gonna go somewhere. Not okay. Necessarily that, you know what I mean? Like, Al not Alex... sure. oh, they're making out now. And... Yeah. All right, Alex's suggestion, I feel like, at least deserves enough merit for us to address it. Um, he says that can we, he's asking, can we make Sauron the a plot? Sauron is the protagonist. The climax is a confrontation with Gothmog. He says he's just spitballing them. And have all of our mm. other stuff, the return of Elway and the birth of Fe Feanor being B-plot. Yeah. No. If, if we were going with Sauron as A-plot, we would have to tie the Elway thingle thing into it and make it part of that A-plot because there's just not enough there. So all the Middle Earth stuff would have to somehow all be the same plot. We would need to come up with a story to tell to make it the A plot. Because we know what's going to happen with Finway and Muriel. Like, we know that story. Story for Thingol and Sauron. Like, I had scenes for them. I don't have a whole story to tell. Um, there's two problems. The first problem is it's the birth of Feanor. The second yes. problem is uh, we're kind of there's not there's not enough meat for Sauron. Like his his nonsense with Gothmog is, is like if you put everything it's, done over the season together, maybe you have an episode. You know what I mean? No, if it's not that there's not enough meat, we we would have to make we would have to make meat up, which there's plenty there to do. I just don't feel entirely comfortable taking the focus off of one of the most important births in Middle Earth outside of Luthien, maybe. Yeah. I think that's the bigger problem, certainly. But I also think that, yeah, I don't know what I would even do with Sauron. <laughs> Elway, or Melian, really, is the antagonist force for Sauron, with Gothmog being the personified antagonist. <laughs> that actually really, I actually really... That's that's really interesting, and I want to see that show too. I just don't think that's our show. <laughs> um, 
I realized that Fanor as a small child is not necessarily an important person. However, the death of his mother in the land of Valinor, where everyone is supposed to be safe and happy, mm. is usually significant to how he grows up as a person and his opinion of the Valar. And um, we need to show that. Yeah. You're not going to sell Maria so, on the idea that Feanor is not important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, am also not sold. I mean, I don't know why you would say that. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I the climax of the episode doesn't have to happen. The climax of the episode doesn't I, have to happen at the like the, within the last minute to two minutes of the episode, right? You you can have the climax of the episode, you know five to eight minutes before the end of the episode and then have, you know, a cooling off period where you're kind of dealing with a little bit of the fallout and setting up the next episode. So, yeah, but I think Alex was suggesting not more than four minutes for that. So... Yeah, I mean, it's not every episode is the same. Give it ten minutes, whatever. Like, it depends on, it depends on what we are going to do with okay. the climax. What is the work that we want to get done with it? And if we need extra time for that then that's totally fine uh you know who's k where what's up that's who that was who who's who what? that was who i don't know um oh, yeah. Alex wants to know if we're gonna yeah cut. yeah we should yeah. get yeah let's do that Let's take a quick break. I think I may have already gone over. That's okay. We might have to split this segment up into two. Not a big deal. Anyway, this has been the Silver Film Script Discussion Season 2, Episode 6. We'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> 